Miss Monique is one of the fastest rising progressive house artists at this time. Her signature sound is a blend of melodic techno and high energy progressive house that has claimed her releases on Purified, Cercle, Black Hole Recordings, and even Drum Code. Not to mention she runs her own very successful label called Sayona Records, where she releases her own chart topping tracks consistently. I'm going to break down this track for you step by step and show you how to create music in the style of Miss Monique. But just a reminder, this is for education purposes only, and I really encourage you to create your own style of music and just use this video as a learning tool. You can download this project, presets, samples, everything included in the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Some key elements to make progressive house like this is the kick drum tends to be a little bit more aggressive and loud and punchy, almost like a techno kick with a bit of mid presence and color. The bass usually has a couple different layers with a lot of movement. It's very powerful, usually quite aggressive, punchy and dynamic, and usually just high energy. The bass accents. This is where you're going to hear a lot of that high energy punchiness coming through that's going to layer on top of the bass. It gives the track a very dark and aggressive character. And usually they're just quick punchy bass stabs or they're actually in a melody of their own. The drums are usually hard hitting, fast, aggressive to keep that momentum and high energy of the track. One or two percussive sounds, fast 16th notes, and then one strong hat to really drive the track. The synths are usually very mysterious and melancholic sounding. A lot of arps and melodies that really carry the melodic structure of the track. Some strings or pads to kind of glue everything together and fill in the empty space between layers. Sometimes the leads are very heavily distorted and strong and crispy, but sometimes the synths are a bit more soft and clean and almost angelic sounding. But they tend to always create a balance of tension and beauty. All right, let's jump into the project and I'm going to go through track by track to show you how to make music in this style. I'm in the main drop of the track now. The beats per minute is 124, which is where a lot of Miss Monique's tracks are kind of hovering around 121 to 124. And the track is in F sharp minor. I'm going to start with the kick drum first. So for this style, kick drums usually you want between 200 and 300 milliseconds on your kick. If you go any longer than that, it starts to get pretty sub heavy. And then the tail of the kick might be a little bit too long. Anything shorter than about 200 becomes a little bit not sub heavy enough. And it's mostly just punch. So between 180 and 250, 300 milliseconds for your kick drum is usually what you want to aim for. Then I've added some overdrive and drum bus to give it a bit of color and mid presence so that it punches through the mix a little bit better. So if I listen to the sample, it's very clean, it's nice and punchy, it has a strong presence, and it's not overly snappy and it's not overly sub heavy. I'm using the overdrive to add some color. Much more of a slap, hits a bit harder, but it's a little bit too techno-y for me. So I've added a drum bus, which is actually softening the sound a little bit. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure why. I've just discovered that drum bus does soften that a little bit. I'm only using 30% here because I find that the limiter inside of the drum bus is a bit aggressive, but then I'm using a, just a tiny bit of the transient. Just a little bit here goes a long way. My dampening is up all the way and just pushing up the drive a little bit to make a, that kick a bit more powerful. Then just an EQ8 with a high pass filter on it. And I will be using this automation to filter up the low end of the kick later on in the track and in the video. The kick is tuned to the key of the track. The kick is an F sharp minor so I want to make sure that I'm side chaining my kick properly to my base so that they're not overlapping and they're creating room for each other in the mix. So I have my side chain channel here which is a duplicate of the kick channel and I have the MIDI going all the way across and the reason for this is that I'm putting my instruments that I want to side chain to the kick to this side chain so that I'm not changing with the kick drum with EQ and, and, and different settings that I will be putting in throughout the track. It's not going to adjust the actual side chain level. This is also referred to as a ghost side chain or a ghost kick. 
So now I'm going to focus on the base layers. There's two main areas of base I have here. The base groove, which is your main solid sub bass line. And then I have the base accents and stabs. This is where the aggressive punchy plucks and stabs that really give the track its rhythm and character are going to be. I'm going to show you some presets in both Wavetable and Serum. So if you don't have Serum, that's totally fine. Serum is great for this style, but Wavetable works just as well. I'm going to start with the Serum layer and this is how it sounds. So it has movement, it's dynamic, it's powerful. I'm going to strip this back and show you how you can make this sound. So I'm going to turn off this send first. This is actually sending to a return track, which has a reverb and delay. I'll touch on that after. Some simple EQ on the low end, as well as taking out some of the stereo imaging in the bottom end of the track. You can see that there is some stereo imaging, so I've just used this EQ to cut that out so I don't run into any phase cancellation issues. Going into the Serum patch itself, this is a preset I made called Alien Purr. It's going to be in one of my new preset packs that I post on my Patreon using two different wavetables here, and this is how it sounds. It's a pretty cool sound. And it might look complicated a little bit and it might sound a little bit complicated, but really it's just a pluck that I've added a bit of processing to and a bit of movement to within Serum. So let me show you what I mean. If I go into the effects and I turn these all off, it already sounds quite different. A lot less interesting. And I'll go into the matrix and I'm going to turn off the LFO one from the A warp and B warp. And now take a listen. already way less interesting. So what I actually did here is I have this LFO one controlling this asymmetrical plus and this asymmetrical minus. This is changing the wave table itself. So it's manipulating the waveform and it's just controlling it to make it feel like it's a little bit different. And that movement, that modulation back and forth just makes the baseline feel super interesting because your ear can't really put your finger on where the bass sound kind of starts and stops. It has this movement that's not really aligning with the baseline and it makes it feel very professional and interesting. I also have this velocity on the cutoff, meaning that the harder the note is pressed or the higher the velocity amount is, it's going to open up that cutoff a little bit more. So if I actually go into the clip, I can see that some of these notes are a little bit quieter quieter and this is how they sound when they're quiet and with the velocity turned up all the way it actually opens the cutoff just a little bit more. So you can put this on a bunch of different parameters inside of your serum, your drive, you can put it on your resonance. But doing this and changing your velocities will just give the sound a bit more movement. Without this LFO movement it's just a pluck. So now I'm going to show you each of the different effects. The distortion is adding just a bit of warmth. Then the compressor here is a multiband compressor. So I always come in here when I'm making new sounds and I try out this multiband compressor. This is a really strong compression and it always changes the sound quite heavily and sometimes it sounds really cool. So if I just turn this on, it's going to change the sound quite drastically. And I can fine tune this with these different parameters, the high, mid, and low here, and the different threshold settings here. I'm going to just dial in about 30 or 40%. It just makes it feel quite different timbre of that sound. I like it a bit more. That's this EQ is pushing up a high shelf, just making it even more crispy. And then this filter is just softly cutting a little bit of the high end. It sounds counterintuitive, but I'm pushing up a lot of the high end and then just on a slope, slowly bringing it back down so it doesn't feel so aggressive. Finally, I'm sending this into a return track. And this return track has some EQ cutting out the lows. I don't need delay on the low end here, muddying up the track. And I have this delay, reverb, and some mid-side EQ pulling out that stereo image that the reverb and delay are going to cause. And it sounds like this. It's very subtle, but it's just a bit of ear candy, a bit of glue. And finally, I have this compressor, which is actually sidechain compressing from the original sound. So the mid the audio from this mid bass is actually this one. So when this one plays, it's squishing down the reverb and delayed signal. The sound is coming in between the different empty spaces in between the bass notes, and it just glues everything together.
It's very subtle, but sometimes subtleties are what brings you from an intermediate to a professional producer. Just wanted to interrupt the video to let you know that I offer online music production courses as well as coaching. These are two of the best ways for you to increase the quality of your music production very quickly. I have both a beginner and an advanced course, which has already helped hundreds of producers achieve their goals by signing music to labels, getting gigs, as well as making money through sales and streams. So if you're interested in either of the courses or learning coaching directly with me, click the links in the description below where you can learn more information. All right, back to the video. For the wavetable preset, I basically just did the same thing. Sounds a little bit different. A little bit more techno. I'll do this super quick. Basically, I turned this warp and fold on on just a square wave here. So you turn the fold and the warp up with this modern here, and it creates a much different timbre. Envelope two, which is creating a pluck. And then the LFO one is on the cutoff as well. So that it's just opening, closing that cutoff. And I want to turn the retrigger off. That way it's going to consistently follow the LFO and not restart every time the note is played. Some EQ taking out the lows and some of the highs. And then the OTT is the same as inside of the Serum, that compressor that I used. I'm clipping a bit, so I'm just gonna turn that down a little bit. Then the reverb and some mid side EQ as well to pull out the low end so we're not getting some phase cancellation. Now that you know how I made these two bass elements, everything after that is basically just a tweaked version of those sounds. So it's much easier to take a sound that's already sounding good, duplicate it and fine tune it to something different than to completely remake something new. I'll skip the sub for now. That's going to be in the breakdown of the track. It's basically just a sawtooth with some filtering, nothing special at all. The bass glue here, this is a cool sound. This is just to fill up some of the empty space, just like we did with the return track. So to make this, it's very, very simple. I just duplicated that sound with the fold. I reduced the warp, and this is how it sounds without the EQ and this delay plugin and reverb. So it just goes to show you that you don't need some fancy sound design in the sound itself. You can just use some EQ and some simple delay and reverb to really make a sound interesting. So again, sounds kind of bad here, right? But when I add the Wanderer, it becomes this rhythmic atmospheric element. And then the reverb softens it up and makes it more of a background element. This element is actually quite important because a lot of Miss Monique's tracks, I noticed that there is this either rhythmic element or soft type of kind of stringy pad or pluck in behind a lot of the rhythmic parts of the track. And this is to create a sense of glue and to kind of put something in between the drums and the bass. These kind of more middle sections of synths like pads and strings, but it's different than a string or a pad because it actually has some movement and some rhythm to it. And it's much more dynamic and interesting. So what I did is I actually duplicated this and then I froze it and flattened it. And then I dropped that down a full octave inside the pitch. And I created another layer of this, making it feel a bit more full. And you can really hear both of these in the intro with the rest of the instruments. All right, listen how boring that drum loop sounds without these. Last but not least, I have this mid bass number two. And this is again, just a duplicate of this serum preset. If you look here, it's just the same preset, but I've adjusted the wavetables inside. So I've chose different wavetables in the digital and in vowel. And then I've changed the filter settings a little bit just to be a bit more open. And it sounds like this. What I wanted to accomplish with this is to have the bass line and then have an accent of bass on top of that. This is going to create a kind of call and response and keep the bass line super interesting.
right? So having two layers like this kind of interplay back and forth keeps that baseline super fresh, catchy, and interesting. So I just had to place these different MIDI notes in a place that would encourage the groove and make it even more catchy than just having one or the other. And once I add in all these different plucks and other layers, this is going to keep a bit more of structure in the baseline as well. I'm going to skip over the bass stabs and accents for now. I'm going to come back to them a little bit later after I cover the drums and the synths because those are going to be the final touches of the track that are really going to make it something special. Diving into the drums, starting with the main hi-hat. So I have two layers, the punch and the body. A lot of Miss Monique's tracks has an open hi-hat, and this is to increase the energy of the track. Usually the bigger, more aggressive sounding the sound is, the sample or drum or synth sound is, the more energetic it's going to sound. The sample itself was quite long, so I've just reduced that, faded it out, cut off some of the high end because I have the punch and the body hitting up there. It was just a little bit too much high end and playing this along with the kick. Very basic, just throwing that into a return track as well with this send and having a little bit of drum reverb. Next, I wanna make this a little bit more interesting, a little bit swingier. So I'm going to add in a groove from the groove pool. So I had this Afro jazz bongo, sounds like this. And I'll grab that and throw that onto the actual channel itself. Add in maybe 20 to 25% of timing. Depends how swingy you want the loop. I can drag and drop it into the MIDI track or drag it on like this. If I want to see what it's doing to it, I hit commit and I can see that it's just slightly adjusted some of these notes to not be on the grid so much. Moving on to the hat number two, this one is just to add a little bit of accents and swing to the hats themselves. So I've just chosen two layers here. And you can hear how they sound in the actual loop. So that shaker is kind of there to add a bit of dynamic movement. And this hit is also there to add just a little bit of swing onto that hat. I noticed this in a lot of Miss Monique's tracks that she has little subtle hits like this to keep the drum loop interesting without being overwhelming because the main focus of the track is the big sounds, the big leads, the big bass sounds, the big snare and hi-hat. So these are little subtle hits to keep it swinging and interesting without taking up too much room. The velocities are all over the place, changing the velocity so each hit is just a little bit quieter or louder and a bit different. 16th hats, I've taken this hi-hat and I've just grabbed just the end, like the tail of it. I've just grabbed a section of the body of it here to make my own short 16th shaker hit here. Added some reverb with the return track and then playing the 16th. But I also have some side chain compression. So when the kick hits, it's ducking down that 16th shaker. I also have some velocity changing the 16th hat so they're not the same every time. Then I have the compressor hitting, squishing that down even more to give that bouncing, swinging effect. The candy shakers are meant for ear candy. So these are actually really pivotal for making this drum loop sound pretty interesting and professional. So I'll listen to them on their own. And now listen to them in the context of the rest of the drum so far. They just add a really nice level of complexity and it's very simple to do. And I noticed this in a lot of Miss Monique's tracks and tracks similar to this style, these kind of white noise sounding quick hits that are in more of the background of the sound. So for the sound itself, I've duplicated the 16th hat and I've added a vocoder and a delay. The vocoder is adding a bunch of white noise sizzle to the shakers. So if I take this off, it's just the hat with the delay that we hear. But with the vocoder on, it adds that nice white noise sizzle, and then combining that with the rest of the hats, it just adds this layer of complexity. It sounds super cool, and it sounds great in the overall mix. Dealing with the snare, you wanna have one that is having a lot of high end, it's punchy, it's almost an old school sounding snare because it's so big sounding. I'm also sending a lot of this to the return track. So there's a really big reverb on the snare. It's punchy, but it also has a really crisp high end. And that really carries into the reverb. And I have a saturator here, but I didn't end up using it, so I can just turn that off. The off snares are very common in a lot of Miss Monique's tracks. They're there to add some variety and variation to the drum loop. And they're also really powerful sounding. I've EQ'd a bit of the top end out to actually push the snare further back in the mix. So cutting off the top end of sounds pushes them further back. And then this is how it sounds on its own. 
tons of reverb, some saturation to make it even more crispy. Finally, coming to the perk section. Again, Miss Monique doesn't usually have too many percussion sounds in her tracks, but this is a clave here, very progressive sound. And then this percussion, it's like wooden percussion sound. This one is more catchy. And then the clave is to increase a bit of energy. Also catchy and the interplay between them works really nicely. And that's it for the drums. Let's take a listen to the kick, the bass groove and the drums all together now. Sounding pretty full so far, let's move on to the synths next. Before we jump into the synths, I just wanted to remind you that you can download these project files as well as tons of other project files, presets, checklists, sample packs, and more on my Patreon. You can click the link in the description below or you can click the link in this corner right here. I'm starting here with the pad sound that I have. It's just a basic preset inside of Ableton called Andy's AirPad. It has some filtering, which is giving it a little bit of movement. I've also EQ'd quite heavily just so I don't get a lot of the low end. It's quite heavy on the low end. And I've used this free plugin called Wider. I'll put a link to it in the description below to increase the stereo image a little bit and then cranking up that reverb to 100%. Just really softens the sound, makes it feel much more atmospheric and not so aggressive. These pads and strings are great because they really glue everything together. There's usually a pretty big jump from low end to high end in this style of music because you have your strong kick, bass, and bass elements that are very deep and heavy. And then you have your drums that are much more bright and aggressive and sharp. And in the middle, you don't usually have too much other than maybe a lead sound or some of the bass elements. So this pads and strings are a nice way to have a foundation of melody just in the background kind of gluing it all together. So here I've just used a minor scale F sharp minor, an octave F sharp minor, another octave F sharp minor, and I've gone up the minor third, which is just from F sharp up to the A. If you go to the perfect fifth at the C sharp, it also sounds good. I find that the minor third sitting at the A is actually a little bit more mysterious and eerie. So I'm going to keep it there. And then these in the breakdown itself, I actually change these. So I leave the F sharp on some of them, but I push the root note up to a G sharp and I change that from A to C sharp and from the higher F sharp to the E all within the F minor scale to keep it nice and moody and dark. The chord change just sounds really interesting. Doesn't need to be super melodic, but just something to give it a bit more movement in the actual breakdown, which is something we'll talk about when I do the arrangement of the part of the video. Sometimes the main melody in Miss Monique's tracks isn't actually the main idea of the track. Sometimes the uh, melodies are just there to make the track more interesting and melodic, but sometimes there's something like an arpeggio or a softer melody that's kind of more background where other elements in the track might be more important and more pivotal to the track. Moving on to the main melody, I have this arpeggio that is more of a background kind of complementary sounds. So for this melody, I've kept it in that kind of creepy, eerie, melodic structure again. Sometimes to write good melodies for this style, it takes a bit of trial and error, but you usually don't want them to sound overly happy. You kind of want them to see sound a little bit eerie and mysterious, which I find a lot of people actually struggle with doing because the melodies they typically tend to want to write are a little bit more uplifting. So if you're trying to write melodies like this, don't rush it. Try to listen to some reference tracks to get ideas of get this creepy kind of eerie sound. This is the melody that I chose. It's kind of spooky, it's kind of eerie, and it just fits well with this, this sort of mysterious vibe that Miss Monique usually has in a lot of her tracks. One simple tip that I can give you for writing melodies that are a bit more eerie like this is to jump up quite high in the scale and try to go up about six or seven or even eight semitones and just drop down one. So listen how this sounds.
just by jumping from the root note up about seven or eight semitones tends to make it feel a little bit off-putting and creepy and that's what worked well for this melody. I find that's a pretty common interval jump for a lot of this melodic house and techno, melodic techno and this style of progressive house. To make the sound itself it's just basically a sawtooth making a pluck but I'm increasing the attack This also sounds really nice, but if I increase the attack, you get that nice wafting sound. So I like that a lot. I'm only putting the filter on to 12 because if I put 24, I think it's filtering out too much. And then I've increased this fold to 18% to make it even more interesting. The second layer is a square wave and it's pushed down quite a bit with the detune and quite a bit on the volume, EQing out a lot of the low end. If I turn that back on, I really want to thin that sound out because it's more of a background sound. I don't want too much of the low mids to make it more present. Magic Switch is an awesome free plugin. It's a tool that subtly makes things feel a bit wider, a bit more interesting, adds a bit of movement and a bit of warmth. It's, it's pretty subtle, but I love using it. Some delay, some reverb, and I have Camel Crusher, which is a free distortion plugin, adding a bit of crispiness to it. So for the effects, very simple. I have this washout, which is just reverb and delay added onto the main melody and then recorded to audio. This is a great way to transition between one section to another because it's going to kind of wash out this lead sound. So you kind of lose focus of it and it just transitions into the breakdown. I have some white noise, just with the white noise generator. Then I have this impact, which is just a snare with a bunch of reverb. This is great for keeping the track exciting. Every 32 or 64 beats, you put another one of these and it just keeps that momentum going throughout the track. Some reverse crashes with some delay from the echo and reverb. And then finally I have these pitch risers and they are also using an echo to add even more of a crazy sound to them. Making them feel kind of further away, more intense. And that's it for the effects, just very basic stuff just to keep it going, momentum, adding a lot of these in between to keep that energy of the track up. So now we're going to focus on the bass stabs and accents. And this is where I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting to get to because this is the most pivotal part of this track. This is the most exciting part of the track where the sound design probably sounds a little bit more intense, but I promise you it's actually not that hard to make sounds like this. So for the bass stabs and accents, I'll go layer by layer, which basically is going to just be two layers that I've duplicated and adjusted, or maybe three. The stabs are in the serum, cutting out a lot of the low end, cutting off a bit of the high end. This is called Free Clip. It's a free plugin. Again, I'll put a link in the description below. It is a clipper, which basically just means that it is is working sort of like a limiter or a saturator where it's cutting off the top so you can drive it a little bit harder and it's going to make it a little bit more aggressive and loud without damaging the sound too much. So I had this preset that I've called Monique Gritty Pluck and it sounds like this. Uh, the reverb's not even doing anything right now because the dry wet's all the way down. But it sounds very aggressive. It's pretty aggressive. I'm using this digital. So a lot of the digital wavetables sound really uh, electric, really gritty and sharp like this. Pulling it down three octaves. The unison on the second one makes it a quite wide uh, with the detune. And the asymmetrical is up a little bit and it's not on this one. You'll notice that this is actually the other preset, the, one of the base presets that I've brought in here and tweaked again. It saves a lot of time to bring in presets that you've already used and tweak them to your advantage rather than just completely restarting. So I'm not using any LFOs or anything. Go into the effects, I have some compression again. The reverb is important here because it gives that kind of hollow sound, like it kind of sounds spacey. 
right? And it sounds pretty cool. And then the compressor, pushing up those mids really hard to get that gritty, crispy midsection. And then the white noise here is filling up the empty space in between. just makes it feel a bit brighter and fuller. And basically the sound is just a lot of cutoff, drive, and some resonance. So what this is doing is the envelope two is opening this up. I'll bypass these two. And you'll find it's just a pluck again. Right, so it's a pluck, and that pluck is opening up quite heavily. And then the drive is also opening up quite heavily to really distort the crap out of this. And then the resonance, just to push it up a little bit harder. The sound itself is basically just a very open wavetable of these two sounds. If I turn the filter off, It's the drive and the cutoff that's creating that plucking sound. And the open wavetable is just what you're really hearing to make that gritty sound. So test different wavetables like this and just make a pluck, open it up a bit more, and you can usually get something that sounds pretty similar to this. Then you're driving it with the free clip. And again, I'm using some EQ to kind of shape it and not have so much low end. The second layer is a wavetable sound, and I actually like it better than the serum sound. So let's listen without the reverb, the free clip, and the camel crusher. So it's a pretty cool sound. To get this, I'm actually using FM synthesis. So if I turn off the FM, it's just a basic pluck again, starting a little bit more open, opening up to 75. Just a basic envelope too, and I'm using FM, and the FM is tuned to 50%, and the amount is 45%. You'll notice if I change the tuning, it's not always easy to get a good sounding FM sound because of the tuning, so I usually aim for 50%, and then change the amount until it sounds pleasant. And I liked it at 45. Adding in that Camel Crusher, the Free Clip, and the Reverb. Combining that with the other stabs. So now you have two sounds, the higher stab, that's the uh, FM, and then you have the one that's a bit more gritty, which is the serum. And that interplay between them creates this really big dynamic movement between both sounds, the higher stabs and the lower stabs, and it creates that call and response, which makes it super interesting. Next, I have this mid bass B, and this is the same preset in serum, just with a little bit of a different cutoff. So I believe this one actually has more sustain, so if I look here, the sustain is up quite high. And if I go to this one, the sustain is not as high, which makes it more of a pluck. And this one just sounds a bit more aggressive. So I did this so that there'd be variation between the different layers of sound. So I can play with more than one version of that sound. Then I have the WOM sound, which goes like this. Again, it is that wavetable synth, but I've changed the tuning to 100% and the amount to 27 and everything else is the same. And finally, I have this WOM longer, which is just, that's a bit long, which is just the same sound, but with the envelope has a much longer attack and a much, much longer release. Both sounds have some voicing and some amount here. And the last thing that I wanna tell you about this sound is that it has this PRD filter. This is actually pretty vital to the sound. If I change the filter from PRD to a regular clean filter, it will actually sound quite different. So this PRD filter with this drive actually changes the filtering a little bit. It's not the same filtering as the clean. And by pushing up this resonance a little bit, you get a different, more aggressive drive than you would with the clean filter.
might be hard to hear because of the volume difference, but just know that they actually do sound a little bit different and the PRD sounds more aggressive and a bit more sharp. Now focusing on the actual writing of the interplay of the different sounds, there's obviously a lot of layers going on. If I listen to the bass all together with the kick, there is a lot of different instruments. So to do this, I start usually with one layer and I draw out the MIDI of everything. So I would probably draw something like this where I move everything up and I just think what would sound good as one layer. After I figure out that rhythm that I want to be using, I just fine tune everything. I'll go in and I'll move this over, try it again, move this one, move this one, just try different ideas until it starts to sound good. And then I will start adding in the different layers, moving different MIDI clips to different layers and seeing which interplay between which call and response sounds best between the different layers. And then just from there, going back and forth in between adjusting the layers, making different layers, trying different sounds. It does take a quite a bit of trial and error, but sometimes even if you're happy with what you are writing with, it's a good idea to test new ideas because then the new ideas might sound even better than the ones that you're already happy with. Just wanna do some final arrangement tips for you. Usually these tracks are between five and a half to six and a half or seven minutes long. This one's about five minutes long. I just didn't do the mix out at the end. So it's basically a full track and usually at around 30 seconds I find a lot of these tracks bring in their bass lines then at a minute they actually pull out most of the elements and introduce a breakdown usually about 30 seconds or about 64 beats these breakdowns tend to have just a bass line which is working along with some chords or a melody to create a nice melodic structure of the track so I've used these pads here with this bass line and it sounds quite nice Then of course I'll start to build up into the drop. So let's do that now. To build up into that drop, I've reintroduced some bass elements using some automation here to remove the low end of the bass as it's building up. The melody is building back up as well. So I've filtered out the melody at the beginning of the breakdown. So it kind of fades away into the background, then it builds back up, but before it drops back in, it fades out again. Just using the cutoff of the EQ for this. To cut this off. And this is just so that it, when it goes into the actual drop, it doesn't feel like it's missing it so much because I've filtered it out. So now we're not really focusing on it as much as we were before. And when the drop comes in, we're not really missing it. It doesn't feel like it's disconnected. The build up itself is just some drums building up with the pads, the white noise, the pitch risers. But before the actual drop, I'm cutting out the low end with some EQ of the bass so that the bass, as it's building up, the EQ cuts out the low. And that just pulls away some of the energy and transitions into the drop. But in between here and the drop, I actually have this really nice snare roll. The snare roll just really leads into that drop and gives you that really nice power right before the drop. I think that snare could be a little bit louder actually. That snare is great because in this empty drop here where there's mostly just bass sounds, that snare has that big snare reverb, the big pow, and that just sounds so good in these styles of tracks because it's contrasting really well with the bass. That big snare really helps fill up that space in between. And as the track is building, I don't have this, the pads here. I just wanted to focus only on the bass elements here, get really nice and powerful. And the pitch riser is and the crash is leading into where the drums come in. After about 32 beats, you'll hear a lot of the time bringing in this main hi-hat. 
the pads are coming back in, and the next 32 beats, usually there is the melody element coming back in. Those snare hits that are keeping it interesting, keeping it high energy, these impacts right here, keeping it high energy, and then transitioning into the next major breakdown. This breakdown is different. It's longer. And something else I did here when the melody came in is I actually started to tame the loud aggressive stabs. So I turned them down with some cutoff frequency. So these go from sounding like this to this. This is the transition into a new part of the track while not changing it completely. And this also helps with the melody coming in so they're not competing for the same space so much. Then it transitions into the breakdown. That breakdown has these big WOM sounds. Super cool sounding. And as the track is building up again, these stabs are coming in to start building tension, but they're also further back so that they're not super obvious. So I've added some reverb, I've turned them down in some volume, and they sound like this instead of this. So they're quieter, they're a little bit further back, and it just builds up the tension in the track. The breakdown's a little bit longer, bringing out the melody, bringing back in the melody, keeping those pads going. And any time that you have something come in, like a drop come in four or eight beats after, and you can see that the phrasing is not lined up here, you can see you know, you see the, the light gray or the darker gray. See how when I bring in the drop here, now it's not really lining up with the grid. Usually this would start here because that's the way that the arrangement kind of lines up. But anytime you do this, you can actually right click and insert time signature change and it's going to restart that four by four time and it's going to restart your arrangement. This is just for your eyes and, and for you to actually be able to see the different blocks of 32 for it beat bars inside of here. So I hope that makes sense. But without this, you can see that it moves everything kind of over. And with that back in, now the phrasing ends here, it starts over and we're back onto the original phrasing that the uh, the 32 or 64 beat grids that you would be, um, that are a little bit easier to keep track of in your track. And then this breakdown is a little bit different because it has a different kind of lead into the drop, which I heard in a lot of Miss Monique's tracks where instead of anything, she just lets the track kind of wash out, big snare build. And this drop is a bit different too because I have now the percussion that I didn't have in the first drop until later. So I have here just these perks, but in the second drop I have both perks. Keeping the second drop just a little bit more intense than the first drop to keep it interesting.
All right, producers, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to download these project files, click the link in the description below and make sure to subscribe and like the video if you haven't already.